Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Hey, welcome to your day. <laughs> my name's Corey, and this is my best friend. What's up, Tone? What's going on, brother? You're not my best friend. I was talking to, my, <laughs> to our guest at the table, Dick. Uh, What's up, man? How you doing? Ah, oh, dude, I'm blessed, man. How you doing? Amazing. Um, once again, we are live at uh, Premier Orlando. Um, it's definitely, uh, we love doing live events, and we love being here. Um, this year, the floor is a-booming. Dude, it, it's, it feels like pre, pre-2020, man. It is it is packed out there it's packed out there we've talked to a couple vendors and people are really happy with the people that are showing up and it was really kind of cool to see like a bunch of faces we haven't seen in a while like um larissa love actually set up a booth this year which is super dope yeah i mean just see it it feels like like back in the day man it's just everybody's back everybody's happy everybody's Mm -hmm. uh hugging it out just just it's incredible it's incredible. Um, you know, we say this at every podcast, and um, well, big shout out to Schedulicity too, right? Yeah, uh, thank you, Schedulicity, for sponsoring the weekend. We, uh, you know, anybody who's been a part of this podcast knows how much we love Schedulicity. Yeah, I mean, once again, if you are a solopreneur, if you're a, a, a sweet owner or sweet user, man, Schedule Schedulicity, like their entire model is designed around sweet owners and around like solopreneurs. So like like everything, their entire like business filter is how to make, um, you know, our lives easier. Yeah, and, and it'll make your life not only easier, but more efficient. That's, you know, it, that's it. Uh, you know? From Schedulicity's pays to the just the emails, the templates they provide. I mean, everything that you need as a solopreneur, uh, they can uh, totally help you out. I love the email marketing too. That that's very cool. Um, Incredible. Yeah, you just like I get it from Greg all the time because you know Greg cuts my hair, and so I'll I'll book on Schedulicity, and next thing you know, I, you know, I get all these emails from Greg. You know, saying, oh, I'm going to be out of town. You know? <laughs> you know, oh, I got, you know, these products in and all these things. So, yeah, it, it's, it, they do it's a easy, great job. Right? Yeah. It's so easy. And uh, most importantly, for us at least, um, is that our clients love it because the ease of, from from their side, is it, so easy to use as well. Yeah. You Thanks know? again, Sketch. Sketch. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Missy. Yeah. Love you um, guys. So whenever we get to do these live events, you know, we have two goals and those goals are to dig deeper with our old friends and to find new friends. And today is definitely a dig deeper with our old friends. Um, so on the podcast today is our dear friend. You're not saying old as an old. You're saying. No, I'm saying we're old. We're yeah, old, you know, right. we're old, but uh, but we have a, a young foxy babe uh, sitting across the, the table from us. Um, it's our it's our it's our O O L E our old friend, uh, Miss Elizabeth Fay, and she's doing some cool stuff this weekend. Um, she is uh. A, as always, you know, part of the PBA and, and part of the Beacon. Um, I'm learning more and more about Beacon, and I, it's really cool that our industry is taking responsibility for the next generation. But uh, we'll get into that. I yeah, think. Uh, we'll get into all that. And you, you're talking about someone who's, uh, when we first did our podcast with uh, Elizabeth uh, in 2018, oh uh, and just, you know, just doing the podcast, and she had a vision, right? 
And then here we are five years later, six, you know, six years later. And that vision board must have so many checks on it because you're talking about someone who's building a legacy for themselves and is and not because they're looking at themselves because they're looking at the industry. I would say that she's building this single person. Miss Elizabeth is building a legacy for the industry. That's my point. You know what I mean? Someone that's looking at the industry and giving everything that they have to elevate and to help and to make this industry uh, better than what, how she entered. You know, without opening, I don't think we need to talk about her. Don't nope. talk to her. I mean, we could just check out here. Hey, thanks for joining us. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Look, she's taking her headphones off. And Elizabeth, dude, welcome back, buddy. Hi. I'm just over here crying. Aw, <laughs> Bubba. Hi. You so know, we adore you. I know. It's so yeah. cool. You know, like Tony uh, alluded to, like the first time that we chatted, we didn't really know each other, but you were this young girl with all these dreams and all the, not even dreams, but like these missions, I would guess, you know, and then to watch these how intentions, intentions. Yeah. Oh, I just learned something that I wanted to share with you. I was watching this TikTok video and the guy was saying that I'm setting my confidence through my intentions, not through my, um, my validations. And I thought, whoa, that's so Elizabeth. Fay. Right, yeah. <laughs> Everything I filter through, you know, what would, I, I need a bracelet that says, what would Elizabeth Faye think? <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> What's up, bud? How's your weekend? Um, it's really good. Yeah, it's just getting started. We just started today and lots of stuff in the wellness space and just um, – kind of an exciting and emotional weekend just because you know i've been speaking on wellness with premiere for a few years now but just what we get to add to what we're sharing about today which we'll share about in a little bit just feels i I need to hold my shit together because i have my makeup on and it needs to stay on (laughs) so i'm gonna try not to cry too much the good news is there's a lot of makeup artists here that's true but yeah it just feels like um like a big deal to be able to share with a lot of people and just like an opportunity to create a lot of change in a really important area. When you were, um, and, and I, I, I'm purposefully being offensive a little bit, but when you were just a Redkin artist, did you did you have this vision of, of this whole wellness space or was it kind of something that, that, that happened later on? So we started Hair Love, I can't remember if it was about... 17? I know, I know it's 2017, but I'm trying to remember when I became a Redkin ambassador. So... Hair Love has always been founded on wellness business beauty. And we always have had the escape to learn concept. So that's been on our website. Like we almost haven't even changed any of our messaging. It was always hairstylists change the world. It was always the three pillars, wellness, beauty, business. So that's what Hair Love Retreat was founded on. Um, the wellness side was more like, um, I would bring my life coach in, I would do intention setting. My dad would do the yoga. He would do the hiking. We still do all of that. Um, we started with a meditation visualization the first night. Um, we did, we had like an opportunity where you like write something and you get to burn what you're letting go and you put it on a star wall. So that's like OG hair love stuff. And so that's always been there. Um, the kind of like breath work and stuff like that's newer. And that's kind of more like what I do in a lot of more in my personal brand, but I infuse it into hair love. But I, I have tried to keep hair love Like, I didn't totally want Hair Love to go off the woo-woo cliff in case our community, like, if they want to go there, they can. And I have other Mm -hmm. products where they can go deeper. So we've kept Hair Love, Hair Love. I think the only thing we've added that's, like, a little more, for lack of better words, woo-woo or deeper healing is breath work. Mm -hmm. And that's also something, if for some reason someone didn't feel comfortable with that, they could not go to breath work in the morning, just like you miss out on a workout. And you could still have the whole Hair Love experience. So... My work has obviously gotten deeper in that area. I would say before I did like, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I just mean like I did like basic bitch life coaching. Like let's set goals. Let's manifest. Let's do vision boarding. And I still teach all of that. I just now do like deeper work with people. Um, But so we still do all that. And so I just think it's gotten deeper and like, it's, uh, I mean, it's gotten a lot deeper. It's gotten a lot deeper. Yeah, and as my personal life, things happened and, cata- you know, catapulted me in a different direction, um, it just kind of ended up having me retire, like, a lot of my business and life coaching programs to be mainly focused on healing life coaching and how do we integrate that into our businesses and families instead of the other way around. Right. We, I was um I was having a conversation with a friend of ours and I was trying to explain the Elizabeth Fay experience, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, here's what's amazing about Elizabeth is that she's uh she's definitely two feet into the ocean of woo woo, 
but she's also a badass business coach as well. And like, I think so many times, like certainly when you, the woo woo and all that, like there's not like a business around that, yeah. you know? And, and like, you are just as confident in like, we need to set some financial goals as you yeah. are. Let's go hold your breath for a couple minutes. Yeah. Well, and I think business is spiritual. I think making a lot of money is spiritual. I think helping people is spiritual. I think being a good mom is spirit. Like to me, like being successful, and healthy and wealthy like it's all connected and i think um i mean i'm definitely an entrepreneur through and through i've always been a businesswoman i love to build businesses that's something i'm good at i was a great business coach for years i still coach i just coach through the lens of like how can i create my empire whatever that is for you behind the chair an esthetician a you know, owning a salon and spa, owning a school, being a teacher, whatever you're doing in the industry, you know, how can you build an empire that serves the wholeness of you from finances to your body, to your family, to everything, instead of being in so much service to work that we compromise those other things. I think they all get to live together. And so I think it's like business through the lens of a life coach, you know what I mean? And just like looking at all of that. And I've found when I lead with my body, with my heart, with my intuition first, and then make other thing match, like match it, it's, it's sustainable. Not only is it successful, but it's sustainable and I'm fulfilled from it. And, um, That's yeah. what I was going to ask, like at the end of the day, because of the, of the wellness, you're taking care of your mind, your body, you, you might not necessarily, f even though you the stress or the the, 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 the mountain's still there, but you're not necessarily, like, allowing it to, to kill you or to, to yeah. drag you under. Yeah, why, why hike the fucking mountain if you're not going to be okay at the top, you mm. know, to really enjoy yeah. the view? Or do it alone. I don't want to hike alone. Like, <laughs> I want to go with someone I love, and I want to see that view. And so I think, you know, our teams, our communities, our clients, like, you know, really doing things together, that's something um, that's a big part of our brand is community and, you know, creating teams and cultures where we support each other. And whether that team is like you and your clients, like they're still part of like your community. They're your community. They're your people. And so... I mean, we still talk yeah. about that hike on Angels Landing with everybody. And, and that's what, I mean, Angels is amazing, but doing it together is a whole other no, that's experience. Yeah. That's the experience. That's, someone's that's like, I can't do it. And someone's like, you got it. I can see it in you. Dude. Someone's crying. You're talking about life together. You're talking about your dreams together. You reach the peak. You're like, holy shit, we did it. Like, yeah. like all my best accomplishments, like my TED Talk was one of the coolest things, even Vitality. Honestly, what made it amplified was like my mom in the front row and my dad and my best friends and Aww. my people I used to do their hair and like my friends came in and my child like to look down and see the people I love celebrating me like that's how I want to do life and like same with we launched Vitality or Hair Love like it's the people that make it magic, you know, and so. You know, th th there's words that you said. I think it was the open, the first hair love that we went to. I think it was your opening, your like speech, which was like pre the, the the TED talk and stuff. But you said something that 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 resonates with me a lot, and that is, what if it wasn't hard? Mm -hmm. Like, are, is life hard, or are we making it hard? I, I, that's what I took from yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's the Buddha quote: "Pain is inevitable, but the struggle is optional." And the struggle is what we do with the pain. People are going to die in your life. Things are going to happen. I've been through a divorce. I've been a single mom. I've, you know, dropped out of high school. All the childhood shit, right? All of the different, like my husband, if you know my story, suicide attempts, depression, all these crazy hard things. I had a health crisis that put me on my thing. You know, I have beautiful, amazing things too. But I'm like, those are painful things in your life. And, but what you do with the pain is what creates the hard, is what creates the struggle, and the whole idea, my book that comes out would be called Show Me How Easy It Is, is it questions our ideals around struggle. Does it have to be so fucking hard? Like, what is our relationship with struggle and that constant, you know, overextending? Like, what's our relationship with that and why? And if there's more ease and there's more flow and there's more beauty, like, what does it look and feel like? And it's like when you see pain as a teacher, all of a sudden ease can come in. It's an opportunity for transformation. You still have to go through a winter season, but maybe not like a two-year fucking winter. Like maybe like a three-month winter and then spring is promised. And so I think, you know, our relationship with, I believed my whole life, life had to be hard. In order for me to be successful, to have good things, to be a good mom, to make enough money, to provide for myself, it was just going to be fucking hard. And I've just decided, you know, after, 
that was like part of what led to my burnout and honestly the vitality project and all these other things was life I thought life had to be so hard. I was doing a lot of amazing things, helping a lot of amazing people, salon owner, you know, teacher, educator, empire, working for brands, like you name it, I was doing it, podcast, tours, all this stuff. But it was fucking burning me out so much. Even doing stuff I loved was burning me out. For people I love, doing my life's work, but I was doing it overextending past my limits of what was too much. And that's what led to a very serious physical health crisis. And at the same time, my husband was having his mental health, which he struggled with his whole life. And he was severely depressed, suicidal thoughts, ideation attempts, all the things. And his medicine stopped working, which is really fun. And um, that is when he was told he's medicine resistant. All, all the other medicines they put him on made him have a psychotic break. And they did a DNA test and said, yo, none of these work. The only one that works is the one that doesn't work anymore. And you're what's called medicine resistant. And that was our turning point to be like, why have I made this so hard? Like why I love hair love, but it's so hard. Like I love my clients, but it's so much work. I love my salon, but it's fucking killing me. Like I love being an educator, but like being gone so much is not working being a mom. And I really had to reevaluate like, why am I doing this? Who am I doing this for? What is my definition of success? What are my core values? Like, who the fuck am I and why? And when you're that, like, you can be, have a million problems. When your health is a problem, you got one problem, mm. right? Like, 99 problems, but then when your health comes in, you're like, I have no other problem other than this. And that's what happened was there was no other problem than, well, Derek's going to kill himself, and I'm so sick I can't get out of bed. So this is our only problem currently. It's not what should I do with the business, da, da, da. It's like, how do I stay here and be okay and then what do I do with all of these amazing or terrible things around me like what am I going to do with them when I'm healthy and that's what led to us finding breath work that's what led to us finding trauma healing that's what led to us meeting the inner child I was like who the fuck I have many children in me like what like you know like I that's what I learned about the science of everything and I always grew up with a woo-woo dad I mean he does He's a mountain man. He's like a medicine man. He can tell you every herb and how to medicinally use it. He leads hikes, rendezvous, yoga. But we weren't into like like deep healing in this way. Like my dad didn't know anything about like trauma healing. He's more like, you know, yoga and like hiking and all of that, um, which yoga can be deep healing. But we, he didn't understand yoga like that. And um, anyways, so we found all that. And that's what really made me be like, well, what if life could be easier? And that's when the name of my book came into my life through a mentor. And I said, show me how easy it is was like my prayer. Like I wrote it on the walls. I wrote it on my mirrors. I had it on my phone. And every day I was like, okay, show me how easy it is. And it was like a surrender for years. And throughout my healing process, I still use this mantra. It's literally on my phone through this entire launch of Vitality Project. Like every day, that's my prayer to whatever you believe in. You know, I have my higher power and I'm just like, all right, universe, source, God, you know, whatever yours is, like, show me how easy it is. Like, show me my path. I will walk it. And I don't have to always fucking run it, you know? <laughs> like, I can walk it. I know the right people are going to come at the right time. And even the things that fall apart or whatever, they're part of the direction or they're teachers. So when pain comes, it's a teacher because I'm walking my path. And I need to be adjusted, realigned, prepared for the next thing. And I mean, none of this would exist. Like hair love wouldn't exist without my troubled childhood story, without the hairdresser who changed my life, without my dad being the man he is. Like hair love is like a manifestation of my childhood turned into like something that I wanted to like pay forward for myself and my community. Being a community leader, it, honestly, when I went to therapy and life coaching and healing, it was because I was bullied as a kid and I wanted to belong. And so I was trying to find that. And then the more I healed, I was like, okay, this is now coming from a more healed place. Mm -hmm. I know I belong within myself and I'm home. Now I'm cultivating community because it's important and we all need community and how can we empower and raise each other up. And vitality came because of everything we went through that almost broke us that led to my career change from business and life coach for hairdressers into deeper wellness and healing work. And then I was teaching it for years in schools, PBA, Beacon, shows, corporate. Over 30,000 professionals changed in the industry their life. So when people started coming to me and saying, 
we don't know what to do with mental and emotional health. I was like, oh, I, I do. I got you. I got you. I've been teaching it. It's working. I was a beauty school teacher for four years. Like I write curriculums for a living. Like my, but my TED talk prepared me to break down each of those lessons. My book prepared me to write this many modules and lessons, my programs, my certifications. Like I would not have been able to write this program if each of those things in my life gave me a very weird skill set. <laughs> like, I have a very strange ass skill set. Like, what the fuck? Like hairdresser who does breath work, who writes right, school I, curriculums. I, I'm like, going to stop nah. you here, Elizabeth, because I want stop. you to cut. Yeah, no, 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 no. I want you, but I want you to give us what. What is the Vitality Project? What? what wh- who's it for? What's it? Tell us all. Tell us all yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the Vitality Project is now live. I had to keep it a secret for a year and a half, which was the most. You didn't keep. We talked about it a year ago, so you didn't I keep know. it that good of a secret okay. with me. But I have like right. ten people who knew. Like, <laughs> and I'm one of ten. Yeah. No. Oh, when I'm telling wow. you, like how locked down it was. I had to. And I told you, I was like, don't tell anyone. This is an Um, NDA, bro. Yeah, I think like you (laughs) knew, Sam knew, Missy knew, my team knew, and like some school owners, like people who were working with us, like kind of case studying stuff, the PBA knew, but Pivot Point knew, but like no one really knew. Um, So the Vitality Project is the industry's first wellness program. And it's a turnkey program, meaning it plugs directly into your organization. So we have a version for schools. So I'll talk about the school version first. Um, And I just think it's a fun fact. I like to know this about companies. We're self-funded. This is self-created by us. We do have incredible partners now, which I am over the moon. We are officially partnered with Pivot Point, which means we will be distributed worldwide. And this can actually make fucking global change in our industry. So, and that's what they do. They're the most heart-centered, like, curriculum company in the world um and they'll be able to do the part of this that i'm i'm not familiar with right like they have school relationships they know how to do the tech pretty like distribution kind of yeah they know how to distribute it i know how to write and create curriculum and help people like that's what i do and they're going to do what they do so that is such a blessing it's honestly a dream come true like when i signed that contract like the most relief in my body because i was like we're actually going to do this like this is going to work um so they are my distributor for schools, but any school, even if you're with Milady, Pivot Point, your own curriculum, it doesn't matter who you're with, you can just buy the Vitality to plug into your school. The reason students are so important is because they're the future of the industry and we want them coming in with every single tool, every single resource they need to have the most successful, sustainable career. They're the future teachers, they're the future owners, they're the future everything, right? And so when they, I mean, they don't even know how life changing this is going to be for them. And that's fine. They don't need to know. They don't need to know what could have been bad. They just need to know what is possible and to run with it and like, go, I'm just like, go, go, go. <laughs> like, And so they're going to be given all these schools in, in school. And this is hairdressers, barbers, nail techs, estheticians, massage, like the whole beauty and wellness space. Um, it's funny. I'm, I'm seeing this like this project is a helmet for when you're riding a bike or a seatbelt, you know what I mean? You, if you're in a, if you're in an accident, that seatbelt's going to save your life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just habit forming, right? So you're creating habit forming. You're creating these, these safeties. So when they do butt up against something, they, they don't know how bad it's going to get. Right. Because they're now they, they have, have tools. That, yeah, they yeah. have the tools. They're going to open they their the toolbox. The they're going to know what to do. Yep. Yeah. And they get to practice See, it. See, I'm back school. to my bracelet. What would Elizabeth Fade do? I know. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> well, and what's really important about this is I said we have to actually help the teachers as much as we help the students. The teachers are the real influencers of the industry because they're the ones teaching the future, right? So it's kind of a big deal. So the teachers, A, we want them to have sustainable careers where they don't get burned out. They stay with their schools long term. They continue to be educated because they're holding space for them and then the students, clients. And we have to think adult learning spaces are so vulnerable to be a grown up and to be bad at something, to take tests, to fail. That's so vulnerable. And so we teach, we have a whole teacher training on trauma aware language, um, how to create this space where people can be regulated. They can learn, they learn about the nervous system. They learn about biases. They learn about coaching. They learn about how the mind works. They learn about mindfulness tools, how to create shameless learning environments, how students, if you're seeing someone defensive or shut down, I tell them what this is what's happening in their nervous system. Their inner child might be defensive because they're triggered from a math teacher 10 years ago and blah, 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 right? Not your job to be their therapist, your job though, to facilitate a really safe and impactful and life-changing learning environment, whether you're teaching a haircut, a technique, finances, or self-care tips. And so 
they can use these facilitation tools for conflict resolution, for teaching, for coaching, for leadership. So we're creating the entire leadership to be heart centered, to be body centered, to have this awareness. And I was telling Kia, I was like, this is going to open the door for this is the missing link for DEI work to be integrated because we're giving people human skills. And when we human better, we human better. We make places where we can drop when we our biases. We human better. We make better humans. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. And so our slogan is human or biz. Our slogan is human vitality is business vitality. Your profitability is tied to the wellness. Your wealth is tied to the well-being of the humans in the organization. And we know the best part of a business is people, but it's also the hardest part. It's both, right? It's both, yeah. And so we created that for schools. Um, It has been the most stretching experience of my life. Like, I remember when this opportunity came up, I was like, I got this. And I was like, this has stretched me to my skills in every area from writing to editing to curriculum building to just everything. But it's like really shaped me into like, I've like feel so like embodied. Like now that it's launched, I'm like, no one knows what I went through the last year and a half. Like (laughs) I feel so embodied in my leadership through that. But we knew we couldn't just do it for schools. We knew it had to be a place for salons and spots for owners, for their teams. And so, you know, other companies, Google, like lots of big companies, they all have wellness programs, right? Mm -hmm. And you're starting to see this post 2020 where like not as huge corporations are bringing in wellness programs. So whether that be work-life flexibility, vacations, um, you know, encouraging fitness, emotional mental health resources, health insurance, Um, the way they communicate, things for emotional intelligence, like all of these things are starting to come in. And our community specifically, even outside of the whole industry as a whole, they've been asking me for years, how do I integrate this into my team? How do I make hair love feeling at home? And what's cool about a community is it creates micro communities. So I have seen from our hair love, the ripple effect of so many little communities or macro communities worldwide created where people gather, they circle, they, and that's the idea, right? Like is I want to lead leaders. I don't want to lead followers. I want to lead leaders, like go out and be the change. Like it takes us all. And so they go home, they be leaders, they do their thing, they gather people and they're trying to integrate things they're learning. And what's cool about this is this literally gives them the blueprint of like, this is how you can integrate in leadership and all tools for vitality across the board. And so our wheel, our logo, if you look at it, it's a pie shape. And so if you flip that over, Tony, you can see maybe the circle's not there, but if you go on our Instagram, you see it's a circle shape and it has six colors and a V in the middle. And that is actually what's called the vitality wheel. And so that's the heartbeat of our methodology. And it has our four bodies, emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical. And then it's occupational and social. Social is how we relate to other humans, clients, community, self. And occupational is obviously your career. You're good at hair, you're good at nails, finances, et cetera. And so we cover all of those outside of occupational. Obviously, they will support your occupation throughout the modules. Mm -hmm. They're all, that's why the branding is rainbow. It's all matching the different modules. They all have meaning. All the colors are behind the frequency and energy of what those colors mean. The hummingbird is like a deliverer of hope. That's why there's a hummingbird in it. It's a spiritual messenger. So, I mean, people won't know, but like it'll be felt, you know, (laughs) like all the intention behind it. Um, but that will be for salon leaders. So leaders can plug this into their organization. They'll have a private tool just for the owners, managers, whoever they deem as like someone helping run the business. And then their whole team gets a portal. And then they'll have a thing that's kind of like an app, but it's called Vitality Project On Demand. And it has nervous system regulation tools, breath work, mindfulness, kind of like one of those meditation apps, but it matches the program and it's geared for our industry and they're all like short, short, short. So if you feel triggered, overwhelmed, you need energy, you feel tired, you wanna be excited, you wanna be connected, you wanna not be connected to your clients, like (laughs) release that. Um, You just wanna have a better day. You wanna connect to your purpose. You wanna manifest a goal. You want to, just good things too. Like it gives them a tool where teachers can say, hey, some schools are doing now like a little, I'm calling them sacred places, spaces, but they call them whatever they call them, where it's a room to like, go take a chill pill. So they're like, okay, if you're neurodivergent or dysregulated, you can go there. I'm like, if you just need a moment, there should be a space for it. But what are you doing in the room? Are you like crying, scrolling? Like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. So if we give people a tool, they have a tool to then do something, right? Because scrolling is like 
kind of helping, I guess, but mm. it's not really, right? You're just like kind of like numbing out. And you're not actually like regulating. <laughs> Scrolling connecting. is numbing. Can you imagine <laughs> the break room, the back, the, the, the exactly becomes the vitality Sacred room? Space. Yeah. I know. It, that, that's, they could have a chart in the back room. Yeah. Everyone has the app and they could know, hey, my headphones are in. Let them do what they're doing. They just need three minutes. Like they're taking care of people all I fucking see the, like, day. The, the history of, of hairdressing, right? You'll see the break room where it's like, oh, where the negativity is. Then all of a sudden you see a face of Elizabeth. And then from there. <laughs> Not my face. Uh, the logo. Be right. logo. <laughs> and then as soon as it passes time of Elizabeth, it's all vitality. Pri- it's rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, rainbow. So the timeline goes rainbow. Yeah. Oh, it have to be it. a prism, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like just light coming in and then yeah. rainbow leaving. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah oh. instead of the f- her face, it's well, a prism. Well, if you see all the branding, oh. it's like I light it. and reaching out, like hands reaching out. So it's very much, um, that's what we're doing. It's a big deal. Dude, you're amazing because... Like some of us like either like live in our trauma. Some of us like heal from our trauma, and then some people share from our, share our healing from the trauma. And like that's like a next like level kind of like I, I'll say person, but just a next level kind of of thing to do. Like to be re, to to own responsibility. That like okay, I mean it's a little egocentric too. I'm not gonna lie, Elizabeth. But to say like I've got the answer for you, you know. But but that's also awesome. here's the deal though. It's not that I got the answer. This is how the body works. Like this is why I'm so confident about oh, the program. It, it's literally how your nervous system works. Yeah. Like I'm not, t- I didn't make up science. I'm not teaching. <laughs> I didn't make up the nervous system. No, I didn't make up any of the tools I'm teaching. I didn't make up. These have been passed on for years. Like, right. and so it's like, you're learning. Like I didn't make up value work. I didn't make up purpose work. Like why do so many cultures teach purpose work? And I even say that in the video, I talk about the different cultures that do purpose work and all of that. So the only thing I made up is my branding, my logo, the methodologies, the way I bring it together, the way it's delivered, the Mm -hmm. fact that I'm straddling two different wellness worlds and beauty. So the way I share it is made up in that sense, but like the content, you know what I mean? is like, yeah, it's the science of the nervous system. I didn't make up breath work. I'm teaching you breath work. I, you know what I mean? I didn't make up how, um, your subconscious mind works, but I'm teaching teaching you how it works in a way that's palatable that relates to your career and teaching you language frames and scripts to use it so none of it is um anything other than giving you tools to literally human better it's saying this is how your technology works this is why you're experiencing what you're experiencing this is how it would feel better and why and mm. so it's 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 sharing ancient, beautiful, sacred information that I think we should be taught as children. But I think as humans, we're seeing human actualization happen so much faster. People are like stepping into so much healing even sooner. Like I'm so excited outside of all of this, like the type of humans we're bringing into the world, like that's the future of our world. Like I'm so excited. I know our world's like on fire and there's so much shit happening. And that's like what makes me cry is like, this is like when you heal a person, you heal their business, you heal their family, that heals their community, that heals an industry, that heals the world. Like that's literally, that is fucking huge. So it are you saying that hairdressers can change the world? Maybe. <laughs> <I think. laughs> it's maybe the thing I've thought about before. So that's where I'm like, a times. yeah, it's the ripple effect and it's yeah. really, it's small things. How you feel then you share and you help someone else feel better. And I do that with my kid and this and that. And I think when we care for ourselves, we care for our own, we care for our community. And that's freaking enough. It really is. It's more than enough. But if we can all take responsibility for that by starting with us, you change the world by changing your own world first. How was, um, what'd you learn in Egypt? Oh, that's another podcast. But I mean, that's an <laughs> esoteric deep dive. Um, honestly, uh, what I learned in Egypt, so I went for spiritual study and just my own pleasure with my husband and just to enjoy it you know Mm. um but it was a pilgrimage so it was not a vacation it was like a lot of waking up at 3 a.m and getting in a bus and going to a temple really early in the morning I learned how connected we all are I left feeling the connectedness and everything um just learning so much like ancient text and um theories and the archetypes and all the things they believed in and we talked with a lot of people at the table with different backgrounds and religions and ways of believing and just the unity and like that we all kind of at some point believe and say the same things Mm -hmm. and everything comes back to like love and connection it just like i left with a lot of peace and just feeling of like the world just needs more love 
Yeah. Like that's really it. Like <laughs> um, Malcolm X wrote about that. So you know, as, as you know, the, the story that we know about Malcolm is this like, this aggressive kind of um, a leader in the world. But then when he did his Hajj, he realized that we were all connected, yeah. and, and it didn't matter, you know, because he, he lived in skin color. He lived in like the white devil and stuff like that. But then when he did his Hajj, he realized that 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 that's what people needed. People needed people needed love, and the healing was in the love, not in the. Yeah. And the, the the craziness that he was preaching for years before, unfortunately, it happened literally in like the last year of his life. So that's crazy. He wasn't able to. Um, well, he got kicked out of the. That's a whole other story. But but um, wow. but but that's where his healing was, and that um, and that he was committed to to, to move in that way. You know, still like still like Black Pride and, and that stuff, but um, but but with with different eyes and and, yeah. and, and with and with healing within there instead of you know pointing fingers at others. At least that's yeah. the way I understood. It. I don't know no. if I want to. Well, that. and that's how I understand how we we do move forward as a collective with things like that is it's a it's a softening of our hearts so we can see and understand each other. And we can meet each other with love. You know what I mean? Because we've been meeting each other with, um, pr- you know, our prejudices, our judgment. And mm-hmm. so it's like one of my coaches says, who can access their heart first? And so it's like, hopefully that's the leaders, right? Whoever can access their heart first and allowing that softening to really just see the humanity in each other. And then be like, how do, how do we move forward in this way with love? And, um, you know, and then it's each of our own personal journeys to kind of heal those stories that are no longer useful, that were passed to us, whether it be about race or each other or ourselves or our inner child or what money like all of the things and I think when you heal one they're all connected like I've really found that like I'll do money healing and it somehow heals how I feel about other humans and then I'll heal about my dad and it somehow heals how I feel about my body or my husband it's all connected and so um, I think it's just that attunement to this and that's where I think it starts here it's gonna be powerful like oh, literally so like good. more like consciousness and love like being bled through the leaders who are touching people hands-on with their their hearts and their hands like it's just oh you guys <laughs> I can't hey, believe it I'll tell you what I, <laughs> I noticed a difference in my day when like I'll get up in the morning uh, right before the sun pops out I'll go out um, and try to ground myself put my feet on the grass uh, I'll, I'll do some breath work. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do it, but I'll, in a chair, I'll sit down and, and do some breath work. And just when that more first, like first 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of that morning sun, it doesn't have the UV rays and stuff. So you can just, you know, just feel the warmth. And by doing that in the morning, the rest of my day is so good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and I notice when I don't do that, it, it there's a difference in my day, you know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, you know, and the first time we did breath, breath work was with you and it was just, it was an amazing experience. So if anybody gets an opportunity to learn or to, especially yeah. if you, know, you hear you, this, I will send you a free session of breath work. Just DM me. I'll send you a link of it. And if you do, by how many times can I get in your DMS about it? <laughs> whenever you want, <laughs> you can come to breath work with me whenever you want. I just need to, I'll give you a monthly pass. You give me a monthly pass. I would love to give you a are monthly you, wait pass. Wait a second. Are you facilitating or is Derek facilitating? Both. We rotate. Uh, so you oh, can, yeah, can you get some can Derek get love Derek too. Medicine. You right. can get, that's my husband for those who don't know. And he's an amazing facilitator. Um, yeah, we just, we both have a little bit of a different style and they're both great. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, we, we actually, like when we did our breath work the first time, they were both facilitating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We do that in person. When we do it in oh, person, yeah. we co-lead and that's really special. Oh my gosh, dude. When like, you like, you like when we're in di- breath work and like breath work is so meditative and so deep. And so, you know, oh, I actually had a question about that. So when we did <laughs> breath work. We talked a lot about like inner child work and stuff while we were doing it. Um, but I had this like, am I really talking to inner child or am I talking to ego? Because because it seems like I was most connected with the with my ego and I was able to let that go. And the, there was a point like when we came out of it, it's like it's been it's been 25 years since I didn't I wasn't connected to my ego. But in that moment, and I knew the second I came, I woke up to the room. It was back. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like, oh, I'm just going to So it's all here. parts of yourself. Obviously, I don't know what you felt you were talking to in that moment. But your ego's like your shadow. The parts of you that need some light shined on them. The way you judge. That's your inner critic, your inner gremlin. Like any of those names you've maybe heard. And so they're your protective mechanism parts that are like, you know, you're not enough. Or you're this or that. And so 
Um, that's what ego is. And so you may have been, you know, talking to a protective part that was protecting the version of your inner child. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was like, this was the moment of that. And inner child, they're like, it's just all versions of self. And we like, I always picture it like, um, you know, a mother or father, like that inner mother, father that we reclaim and we bring it all into wholeness. So we like almost like collect all the versions back of us into wholeness. And so I love you. I love you. You're accepted. You're heard. You're seen. You're witnessed. I'm not shoving you away anymore. Um, so I don't know exactly what part you were talking to, but that maybe that understanding of the different sense, parts yeah, yeah, yeah. makes it, a it was, sense. It was just so profound, you know, and yeah. like, I'm not, I'm not like naturally a woo woo person, you know, but, yeah. but you know what it is? It's not woo woo. We, we confuse yourself, it with woo woo, but it's not. To love yourself, to understand your it's own nervous system and to heal the way you think and feel about yourself. To me, that's like why we're here to actualize to step into our potential like and so i think you know sometimes woo woo gets this uh um, i think it's dismissive judgment at or times. shadow because i think people are scared of it because they're scared of themselves and mm. we're, we're, that's what judgment is when we it's like when someone's like this is a tool to help you access more of your power they're like oh scared of my personal power and that makes sense right that can be scary and so i think you know, and I'll say this, we don't do deep inner child work or anything in Vitality Project. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. I just want to clarify that. Like, yeah, yeah. if you want to do that, you can come to yeah. one of my retreats. But th that product, your school children are See not going to deep you are, dude? Well, like, like, right. But you want to go deeper, I have other products. But um, but I, I think that that's the thing is, um, it's like, where am I afraid of myself? Where am I afraid to love myself? Where does that fear come up for me? And I also think there's different tools for everybody based on our paradigms, how we were raised and, you know, what kind of fear we're still carrying. So the same medicine might not be medicine for someone if they're not ready and open to it. Will breath work help oh, everyone's preach. nervous system? Of course. If it's scaring the shit out of you, you're Good. not going to be open to it right now. But maybe a little bit of just regulation with a tiny bit of breath work would just help you calm down. And maybe you're never going to want to do a big session. That's okay. You just can learn to find your breath for your own health and vitality throughout the day. Um, and so I think however you can get behind healing is a good thing in whatever way feels safe. Did and you ever think that like, um, you know, uh, with Vitality Project and you're bringing in, you're opening it up for like salon leaders and, and stuff. Do you ever think that you would do like a salon leader like retreat and just like in focus more into like to, to really like double down there so we are going to do a leadership conference in a few years did Once, i nail that yeah you nailed it so we're going to wait breaking news we're building a map <laughs> and the map will have school leaders and salons so salons and schools can find each other we're going to work with canvas me on that so there'll be a beautiful Perfect. directory um i want to wait until our community's big enough for vitality so probably in two years i want to do a, a leadership conference that's all about, so they could send one teacher kind of like becomes the vitality person for their school and a salon owner or a manager could come and we're really going to, you know, we'll do some inner work for ourselves because I think leaders like that's so important for them to do. And then we'll do wellness work. We'll do leadership training. We'll do coaching training, just stepping into like an embodied heart centered leader. So yes, we're 100% going to do that. I just want great idea, Corey. I want yeah, great idea, Corey. <laughs> can I take credit for it? Absolutely. You can take whatever credit you want. Um, and we're going to do it in St. George. So that's where we'll do it. It won't be like... Um, That's God's country, by the way. It's yeah. so beautiful. Oh, yeah, we'll probably go out and do some rock, like mountains, you know, kind of stuff. But a lot of it will be more like... Um, it'll probably be more in like a conference setting, you know, just because of the way that we need to do it. But yeah. I'm a firm believer in trauma bonding. And um, and, 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 and I argue that we talked about, no, hold on. We talked about like angels landing before that. Yeah. And to me, that's kind of what it was. That's so funny. Right? Well, like, when you go through something difficult with people, and another, it And hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you on the coals here for a second. <laughs> you can throw me wherever you want. <laughs> Is that, um, I know you get... You yell at me every time I say it, but like I loved that the first hair love that we went to was so hot. Okay, that was not on purpose. We were well, the well, heat wave and COVID well, make us move uh, our event. Yeah. No, I know, I know it wasn't on purpose, but to me, it was like I liked it because it forced everybody to be together. You know, because, true. You know, in you the know, desert, because, no water, and we had you know, tears. Like, there was lots of water, oh, Tony. Now. Come on, um, but but oh, what was so no AC <laughs> is what you meant. Was, <laughs> well, there was no AC, which which to me again was amazing because what it forced everybody out of the tent. If everybody had AC, they would have been in their tents like 100%. cooling off, and we were yeah. and we were we bonded together, and and there was one room with AC, so we all bonded <laughs> together. Yeah, that's true. You know, to 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 cool. I thought I thought that. 
It was incredible. It I, was a great year. I just yeah. want everyone to know I didn't make the weather hot on purpose, but it. Well, you don't control nervous system, so you're not going to control, control the, the weather. weather. I don't exactly. So, but he tells yeah. everyone that's why you did it, huh? You want right. us to be so sweaty, we were bonded. I was like, I never yeah. said that. Dork. Right. Um, but no, but to me, it was like a different element. It was like a different it added an element. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was a different facilitator there. It was like the heat was facilitating you're the right. bonding of us. You know, that's what happened. This last breath work, and I say the. Like, I was like, the rain facilitated. The rain started going down during a breathwork oh. session. One of the most powerful breathwork sessions Whoa. I've ever held space for. I literally was like, I feel like God facilitated in Pachamama, and I just held space. Like, it was like it, an energy of its own. Because what, pouring rain right by Zion, like, doing breathwork, like, you don't even need anything else to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was just beautiful. So, yes, the heat facilitated in 2021. Mm -hmm. The rain facilitated in 2023. Mm -hmm. This year, I don't know what we'll facilitate. We'll find mm. out. But you know what? It'll be perfect. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. We, um, when we were in Zion, the very first night that we were there, because unfortunately there were some fires nearby, which kind of ruined the, the stars. But the first night that we were there, um, I had this realization. It's, it's, it's a lie, but you know, I'll say it anyways. I had this realization that I think that, that humans started to become disconnected with nature when we had mm. artificial light. Mm. because you're sitting there and you're looking far into the space and you're like, you, you feel connected to it. Like, like there's, it's impossible to look at the Milky Way in its pure sense and not be connected to I it. Agree. You know, unfortunately we, we only had a one night cause we had fires nearby, which was kind of like, you know, pollute, giving us light pollution um, um, in, in the sky. So, you know, we, you kind of lost that, but it was like, the, it was like, Oh, okay. Now I see why we're disconnected, you know? So really the disconnection happened a hundred years ago. 150 years ago, you know, and, and, and it makes sense that, that the first, and then you get cities and all, blah, 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 all that. And then it, it kind of escalated, but I was kind of like, I wonder if this is the first step into like the disconnection. Mm, that's actually a really deep thought. I like that. You can use it. You can steal that. I'm not going to steal it, but I'm going <laughs> to. You're going to noodle it? Yeah, I'm going to noodle it. I'm going to noodle I, it. You know, I love to have these deep, like, what if this, that, what like if? I could go, I could go all night and have those. I know. It's so good. Thank you yeah. for like opening up the space for this today oh hey come on thank man. you you're a buddy man i know but it's a beautiful we can so do just the three of us you know all the time go we ahead, just, sorry. no i was gonna say you know well, the four of us but you know derek slipped out <laughs> on us today he was supposed to be with us but apparently he had more important things to do so how, sad. how can people really get to know more about this the vitality yeah. project yeah. so you can go to join the vitality project on instagram or join the vitality project.com and you can, that'll give you all the information. Um, you can fill out a form, whether you're a solopreneur, a student, a stylist, an owner, a barber, I mean, whatever you are in beauty and wellness, a school teacher, and depending on what your position is, it'll kind of like take you down a different survey. And then we will share, um, if you are a salon owner, we'll give you, um, and tell us that the Heritage Tree Boys recommended you, so we can give them a little thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a salon owner, it will immediately send you a quote based on your team size and a deck that has even more information than the website. And the website has a lot of information, but it will like literally break it all down. If you're a school, it'll do the same thing for a school. And we can set up a sales call if you're a school with Pivot Point. Um, and if you are a stylist, we currently, this is for teams. I think in the future we'll have a product for solopreneurs just so they have the tools as well. Normally, I mean, you can get the tools if you're in one of my masterminds or hair love retreat, like we, we obviously teach those. Um, but I think we will make something just for solopreneurs eventually. That's, we wanted this to be really affordable. So just so I say this across the board, Vitality Project is not expensive. That was one of the things that we wanted. We wanted the, the barrier to entry to be as palatable financially, emotionally, mentally, like we wanted it to have access because that's part of the problem is most people who have access to wellness, there's privilege. You have money, race, where you live, you know, you know someone who's introduced you to this. And so we're like, how do we make this accessible? How do we make this normalized? How do we make this easy? Um, and so, yeah, if you are a stylist, although you can't buy the product, you can totally in the future, we'll have something, you can come to something else, but we mm -hmm. let you be an affiliate. So you can, oh, and we send you the deck so you know all about it. So you'll get the same deck as salon owners and you could tell a like-minded person or if you work at a salon. And so maybe your owner signs up on your behalf, we will totally give you a little thank you as well. So just let us know who sent you and we'll kind of, we just want it to be like a happy pass along. Like 
Yeah. You know, like, thanks for doing it and thanks for helping them and thanks for helping who they help and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's the ripple effect. It. Yeah, the ripple effect. That's awesome. Elizabeth, um, thank you for just being our friend. You know, thanks for thanks for hanging out with us. And, you know, f- thank you for showing me how easy it can be, because that's um, from that night. It, it's kind of been not that I'm near 100 percent on it, but, you know, thank you for showing me how easy it can be. You know, and, and, and I, 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 I honor that mantra. I honor that mantra too. Yeah, it's good. Tone, much love, much yeah. love, much yeah. hair love, much hair love, much hair love. Always. Yeah. Snapper, <laughs> snapper, snapper, snapper. <laughs> the amazing or the queen. You yeah. see that on the? Did you see that on the uh, calendar? Right. By the way, <laughs> we're talking to the queen, <laughs> Miss Elizabeth Faith. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for giving us time because I know that you got eight bazillion stops today. Um, but thank you for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.